In this video, I'm searching for the rare woodpecker species in my area called the black-backed woodpecker. For the past three years, I've been studying this rare bird to try to figure out how to capture it in the summertime when I have access to the high mountain peaks of the Sierra Nevadas. I'll be sharing these tricks as the days go on as I learned how to recognize where they would be and how to capture them. One of the unique things about it is that it commonly lives amongst burnt down forests of one to eight years in age. And today, I'm out journeying in an area burnt down by last year's wildfires. Wildfires are becoming more and more prevalent with the likely correlation to climate change. Last year, the Creek Fire in the Sierra Nevadas nearby my home coated the sky in orange clouds for a month straight. While these wildfires can be devastating, they can also offer new opportunities and life in the year to follow. The trick to knowing how to photograph a rare bird like the black-backed woodpecker is doing your research and knowing where to look. While burnt down forests can be a hot spot for many different species of woodpeckers, black-backed woodpeckers specifically search out for these burnt down forests and thrive amongst them. As I walked through the forest, I took a stop at an area in which I noticed a family of white-headed woodpeckers living together. There seemed to be two adults foraging on different trees with young white-headeds following closely behind them. Most woodpecker babies are coming out of their nests now and learning to navigate the techniques of foraging and feeding taught to them by their parents. White-headed woodpeckers have a diet consisting mainly of pine cones and in the warmer months, insects. They scale the bark on a tree probing in between the crevices in search of food. As they scale through the bark looking for insects, they fly tree to tree in their search. Interestingly, you might often find them clinging to the bottom of pine cones and prying them open from below, as to avoid getting sap on their feathers. But while I wasn't able to capture this behavior, I was able to capture a video in which you can see one snatching an insect. Approaching around the other side of me was a hairy woodpecker as well. Hairy woodpeckers are often a little more intentional with their work, and spend time in one place a little longer than just running up and down a tree. After spending just a short while with it, I found this one great angle between two trees to capture this image. I was thrilled to be able to spend a good hour with the white-headed woodpeckers before leaving them. I had several moments in which they were incredibly bold and came down eye level with me right at the base of tree trunks, and I captured some great images during my time with them. I decided to continue my pursuit of the black-backed woodpecker and move into a clearing of burnt down trees. Along the way, I bumped into a female and male pair of Williamson's sapsuckers, which was quite a treat. As their name suggests, they maintain and harvest from wells of sap that they create, flowing out of coniferous trees. But during nesting season, they also begin to include ants and other small insects in their diet. These birds are fun birds to watch because they are incredibly hyperactive and constantly jump around from tree to tree at often low levels. This means I was able to get close to record them. However, it also meant that they were deeper dug in behind the leaves of smaller trees more often. And as a result, I had fun recording them, but no phenomenal shots along the way. I walked out to the clearing of burnt forest that I decided to spend my time at. There were American robins scouring the ground for worms and other insects, red-breasted nuthatches calling from everywhere and climbing the trees. And even at one special moment, I got the treat of seeing a friendly black-headed grosbeak on the fringe of the burnt down forest. Usually, these birds are neither human friendly nor positioned low down on trees to get good shots. But this one came right up to me as I walked by and I was able to get some exciting shots of him as he foraged through the pine needles looking for some seeds. I was enjoying exploring this new territory. Looking tree after tree of black bark, I inspected them all and then it happened. That's their call. I think I just heard them. Guys, I 
that's the black-headed woodpeckers. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's incredible. So the lighting is really gnarly right now. I got here a little bit late this morning and uh, I've been here for like two, three hours already. So it's a little bit too harsh to get any good shots of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait around a little bit, observe a little bit of their patterns, their behaviors, but not try to get any photographs necessarily today and come back the next day uh, really early in the morning before sunrise, get up at 3, 3.30 and uh, make sure I can get some shots. This is perfect territory for them. So just like I expected, found them here. I'm really excited about this. So I didn't point it out then, but see how the bark is chipped off the tree right here? This is actually going to be the key to how we are going to capture these woodpeckers when we come back tomorrow. So while we're waiting around, this is also a great time to tell you guys about the first ever wildlife photography competition on YouTube that I'm hosting this year. It's gonna be live, it's gonna be super fun, and we're giving away $3,500 worth of prizes, and it's gonna be judged by all of your favorite wildlife photography YouTubers. I couldn't believe that I had finally found them in a photographable environment. The feeling of this burnt forest felt a little otherworldly, and if I was lucky, this morning I would capture them foraging amongst the burnt trees of the clearing. White-headed woodpeckers and hairy woodpeckers once again started to flood the forest, but as the sunrise started to rise over the treetops in the distance, I started to see a family of black-backed woodpeckers flying into the burnt grove from across the way. Seeing their behavior yesterday, I knew what I needed to do to get good shots of them. Firstly, I took some safety shots from a distance, just to get them on camera. I tried to explore a few good wide angles for 10 minutes or so as the sun rose. In the midst of this process, not only did I capture a unique wide shot light on a white-headed woodpecker, but I also managed to capture a really cool moment in which a hairy woodpecker and a black-headed woodpecker were framed symmetrically of one another on opposing sides of this tree trunk in the distance. This image also shows the black-headed woodpecker's famous behavior of flaking off chunks of bark to reveal the insects underneath. This is also called scaling, and this knowledge of how they forage would be the trick for how to capture them well. Black-headed woodpeckers are very deliberate foragers, spending healthy amounts of time at one spot on the tree and often that spot tends to be lower. While many woodpeckers forage high up, black-headed woodpeckers commonly forage down low. As I approached them closer and closer over the next hour, I was careful to observe their behavior so as to naturally work into their environment. I discovered which trees they were working on in the process and positioned myself accordingly. While filming them, I got to witness so many cool moments between the parents and young. At one moment, I was able to show the process of a father feeding its son, learning how to forage behind it. Flying amongst the charcoal trees of the creek fire and blending in with their beautiful midnight blue feathers, I watched them interact with each other as a family and feed for the next hour and a half as I tested out different angles of how to capture them. I found myself blown away by contrast and colors that I was able to capture in this burnt forest at sunrise. Almost from another planet, the lighting ignited these dead trees in a majestic way. For just a few short moments on that third day, I was able to capture these images of them before they flew off. What an incredible adventure, getting to finally capture a bird I have been attempting to find for three years. And their existence is a beautiful metaphor for how life can rise out of seemingly dead things. How can we see the world more like them? Thanks for watching. If you want to enter the first ever wildlife photography competition on YouTube, check out this video in the end screen here or click the competition link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.